Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be doing a heater core on a 2015 Dodge Grand Caravan. New heater core is there. The heater core is located up in here. And on this particular model, you don't have to remove the dash. We just got to remove some of the dash stuff from the lower end. Um, I think we had disconnect shift cable, but you can do it. It's a fairly easy job. I mean, you could do this in your driveway, uh, take a few hours, but um, all off sales, all data, he could print the procedure when I did that. Um, I've done some town of countries. This looks a little different than what I've done. So I just want to make sure I got that so I can make sure I don't miss a step or miss something obvious. Um, got the heater core from O'Reilly's. Um, I haven't given me another one because you can see this end, the inside is round. The outside where it clamps isn't very round. Um, I got me another one. I'm going to try this one, kind of see how things fit. If it don't, if I'm, if I'm not getting warm, fuzzy feelings about it, I'm going to go pick up the other one. But being at the center is round where it actually goes in and seals. I think it'll be all right. And obviously we'll pressure test it after if I use this one, because just to make sure. All right. So the first thing you want to do is you can either drain the cooling system or the approach I'm going to take is I'm going to take the hose clamps off of the heater core lines which technically don't have to do this. You can technically block off the lines, and once you're inside, when you disconnect the lines there, catch the coolant. Um, I'm doing it this option. I'm gonna pop them off here if I can, and then blow air through to get all, almost all the coolant out of the heater core itself, so I don't have to worry about getting any coolant on the uh, customer's floor. So, yeah, a couple different options. I'm gonna try my, I guess, generic, because they're the little spring clamps. All right, I got the got the pipes or got the uh, heater lines off. We just got it kind of tucked out of the way to the to the passenger side. Now let's take a blowgun. No, God, please, no, no, no! All right, we got the coolant drain, uh, the spring it in your face, that's optional if you wanna do that. Um, I just had a brain lapse. I would put a rag or something or some kind of deflector over the bottom pipe to make sure that when it blows out, it doesn't come right at your face and the camera and everything. But anyways, let's move on. Inside, we need to remove this deal. And you can see there's a seam. So it's literally just like the extension for the dash so we're gonna start on this side there's two retainers they're the kind of the push pins with the Phillips screws so we will take those out on this side I find if you just real gently rotate the screw without a lot of force see if you put a lot of force it'll push back in and then get them out where you can grab them Get them out just like just that far. You can take a little trim tool and pop them out just like that. Now we'll go to the other side. All right, same deal on this side. One right here and one down here. It's no big deal if the screw pops out of it. Because you can literally just push it back in. All right. All right. We got the two out on the driver's side. We got the two out on the passenger side. Now, I don't know if the cup holder has to come out. Uh, if the charging ports on the bottom have to come out. I'm not sure. But it has been sitting inside, so it is warm. We'll just kind of start... Well, maybe not. The charge ports move, come with it, but let's go to the other side and pop that free. All right, lights on the other side. I don't know what you can see, but we'll grab it. Oh, okay. Now it's free. Now we'll see if we can, uh, I'll probably get the camera set up somewhere. We'll see if we can lift it up and 
or at least get it out of the way of the driver's side because that's the side we need. Alright, so this little center console between the seats, there's a plug that goes down through it that covers up the uh, spare tire retainer. So if you pop this up, we can actually just move this center deal back and we literally just twist this out of the way. Like so, and that's really, that's all the room we're going to need. All right, so to make it easier for you guys to see, and plus I haven't quite come to the conclusion if we need to, um, I'm gonna remove the knee bolster and the airbag. We already popped the little side trim off. Um, the knee bolster is literally just clipped in like so. Um, doing it yourself, you could just leave it. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the OBD2 connector off along with the hood release. And then I'll show you how to take the airbag off. But the first thing you want to do, since we're going to play with the airbag, is go and disconnect the battery. Make sure you go and disconnect that before we mess with the airbag. Mainly just worry about, if anything, just get the negative side disconnected. All right, got disconnected. We got to set out of the way. And then we'll go ahead and we'll grab a rag and throw over here just this way if this kind of wiggles it doesn't come back and make contact while we're playing with the airbag all right i'm not gonna be able to film doing it but for the airbag if you look up on top of your uh, dash support you'll see two 10 millimeter nuts on this side two on the other side with like little black studs sticking through that's holding your airbag so we're going to take those out and then I'll show you how to disconnect the airbag connector. All right, got the airbag unbolted. It'll it'll kind of hang onto it when you take the last one out. And then here's your airbag connector. What we need to do is take a little screwdriver or a couple picks and this little orange cap get underneath of it and just kind of pop it up. And once you pop it up, you'll be able to take the airbag connector off. All right, little pocket screwdriver. And just work it. Try and do this one-handed. Let me set the cameras down somewhere. Hopefully, you guys will be able to see something out of this. There we go. See how it popped up? And then just give it a wiggle. And it'll disconnect. And we'll set this out of the way somewhere where it can't get damaged. All right, now we'll go ahead and take the shift cable deal, push it up out of the retainer, and just kind of pull it out to the side. And then you see this gold screw here? I think it's a T20, let's make sure. Do that or T15. Nope, T20. You have one here, we'll take out. All right. And then, don't know if you'll be able to see it. I don't know if I can get the camera up to see it, but there's one. I'm pointing right at it if the camera's even close. I can't even see the camera, so. Um, there's one there. We'll take that one out as well. And I'm gonna have to move the camera to get to that one. Maybe, maybe not. All right, now once both of those screws are off, this cover literally pulls straight out. And then, comes off just like so this tab here actually goes into the firewall to hold it against the lines your lines that run through here and then into the heater core so right there is your heater core there is a clamp there and a clamp there that holds the lines in so we're gonna take those off we're gonna pull the lines out because I want to go ahead and clean those out um, the reason we're replacing this is they tried doing cool flushes um, not through me. Um, this car's from quite a ways away from me, but they did some flushes trying to get the heat to come out of the dash. Well, they couldn't get any, and these are known for getting filled with debris, and then obviously you can't get any heat to come out because 
no coolants flowing through it. So, all right, so in actuality, it's a three millimeter Allen socket, but, and I'm gonna show you this, a three millimeter Allen socket, and the only reason I'm using this one is because this top one, low ways up there, and I don't wanna get an extension for my uh, other socket. So we're just gonna take this screw all the way out. And then you can also use a T15 torque socket. Sorry, I bumped the camera. And once you get so far, they shouldn't be being at their inside. And I keep bumping the camera. All right, both of those are out. The clamps are loose. Before I go any further, I'm going to get me a, a couple pieces of pig mat and lay right in here because when you pop those off, you're still going to get some dribble. I might shove a piece up in here, lay some through here. That way, whatever dribbles will get caught because, again, I don't want to get anything on the customer's carpet. I don't want it to smell like coolant. All right, got some pig mat. You could also use towels. You could use paper towels. You can... Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, guys. Easy. Calm down. All right, I'm gonna tuck this one. Maybe. Something about like that. Keep bumping the camera. All right, dribbles. But they were caught by the pig mat. So, we'll pop this line out like so and then we'll go ahead finish popping off the upper clamp dribbles onto the pig mat Like that and then last but not least we can grab one of the inlets for the heater core then we gotta kind of work around the uh, shift cable all right there we go old one is out um, the trick which I had to get you out of the way I had to lay on the floor is grab the shift cable and as you're walking out the heater core kind of just i mean it'll literally rub against it all the way out but you kind of got to pull this down to where it'll slide against it and then it'll come straight out two thousand years later all right we got the new one i had to go to advance or not advance screw advance um o'reilly's they're supposed to have one in by 10. I get in there, I'm going to start working on putting this in while I'm telling you this. I go in there and they tell me there is an issue that their uh, Fort Wayne, I'm just south of Fort Wayne, their Fort Wayne hub didn't put it on the truck to make it down here for 10 o'clock. So I'm like, well, that's great because I have the customer's car tore apart and I really, really want to get this car done. So I'm going to find out a city south of us, about 20 minutes south, had it. So I ended up having to run down and pick it up myself, which whatever. I checked it out before I left the store and it was good. But anyways, I have the new one. It's not all banged up. I mean the box is way better than what it was with the original with the first one. So now, you see what I'm saying earlier about having to pull the shift cable. All right. All right, the new heater core is in now. I don't know if you guys saw any of that, but 
at least I could video that. All right, let's try this so I can lay on the floor. The kit comes with new clamps, new, uh, new seals. So slide the seals over the pipes like so. And then before we put it in, I take a little grease or you can take a little silicone spray, lubricate the sew ring on both of them. That way they don't roll or tear when you're putting them in. Yeah, if I remember right, the longer of the two goes on the bottom since that's the farther spot away. So we'll put the top one in first. We're literally just going to fish it through the top hole in the firewall like so. And then get on there. We'll have to push it in the rest of the way when we go to clamp it. But put the bottom one in. Like so. It's really challenging without bumping the camera. All right. Shove it all the way in. Needs to be a, yep, exactly. Uh, if you guys can see anything, I hate when I got to point the camera up because it's really hard for me to know if where it needs to be so you can see. Probably has a torque spec for this, I don't know. I literally will just snuggle down, I'll get a ratchet and just do a little a little extra bump on it. And now we'll get the top one put on, uh, do the same with that one, and then we'll put the cover on and get the interior put back together. All right guys, I know she flipped around, but we got it running. Um, filled up the coolant, let it run till it got up every temp, made sure all the air was bled out of the cooling system. We have some, oh, so warm. Had the bay door open so the shop cooled down, but we have really good warm air coming out of here. That'll be hot once it gets back up to operating temperature. Um, but yeah, that's all there is to it, guys. So I hope this video helped you out. Um, if you're having the same issue and you want to take care of it yourself, you can. Um, if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. All right, guys, thanks for watching again. Um, comments, concerns, criticisms, whatever you want to. Let me know if you got any questions, drop it down in the comment box. See you guys next week.